time now for our weekly news segment. Okay, everybody, welcome to <laughs> the news. Hey, it's funny again. Hey. <laughs> okay. No camera today, huh? Not today, no. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are you still in your pajamas over there or something? <laughs> oh, to go. <laughs> no, I'm still. No, I'm still. I'm still getting this. Um, getting stuff out of my apartment, so it kind of looks messy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Want it to look nice. All right. Okay, let me look on the stream to make sure it looks good. And it does. Okay, so first thing, six years of cake. Thank you all, Vic said, for making cake a massive success over the last six years. If you're interested in reading my notes on the six year journey, you can do so on, on the Reddit. Here's the six years and hopefully a lot, lot more. Uh, cake Wall wrote, it wasn't easy, but with her help, we made storing, sending, and exchanging crypto safely a piece of cake. <laughs> um, cake Wallet is really an amazing app. And um, one of the best features is the gift cards. And it's really, really cool that they added the the prepaid uh, Visa cards. So you can get that as well. You can get gift cards for any store you'd like. If you want specifically for Nike, for Adidas, I think, from uh, Chipotle, whatever you'd like. Uh, overall, it's an amazing app. I've been using it for, I think, two years or something like that. Yeah, I, I think I might be the the oldest standing user. I, I have to be one of the first, <laughs> uh, you know, other than, than the cake team itself. We did a spaces the other day with Vic. Awesome. Uh, which is great to kind of celebrate the six years that we're talking about it. Um, yeah. Well, one of the, the, the stories is uh, when, when cake first launched, cause they were the first iOS Monero wallet. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody was actually waiting for another one to launch. I think it was, I guess it was my Monero. Everybody had their eye on and they thought they were going to release the first iOS wallet. Mm-hmm. And Cake actually came out of nowhere. Uh wasn't on the radar. They hadn't posted anything saying we're working on working on things. Um, just, you know, Vic in the background uh, built, built this with, the, you know, with, with his devs. And then when it was ready, he put it out there. And everybody was like kind of blown away. Like, whoa, what is this? Uh, a Monero iOS wallet. And mm-hmm. I was one of the first people to reach out to Vic because in his post, he had mentioned that he's from New York City or there was, there was some some reason I knew he was from around here. And so I reached out and uh, we started DMing and I met up with them for a, a beer in, in Soho. Hmm. And the rest is history. Um my my thinking that was like, all right, I got to meet up with this guy before I, before I start, you know, trusting it and putting my money on it. I'm just gonna go old school and meet meet, meet up with the guy. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not tech savvy enough to understand if it was developed well. So I'm like, let me go let me go shake this guy's hand and see if I trust him. Uh, and yeah, I certainly do. And Vic has uh, has shown to be very trustworthy in the community and has given so much to the community. In addition yeah. to his Cake Wallet itself. And all the features he's added through Cake throughout the years and listening to user feedback. He's just give, done a lot for the Monero ecosystem itself. Uh, donate, always the first to donate to things and to support people. So tremendous, tremendous thank you to Cake. And it's kind of, I don't know, uh, slightly depressing to know that it's been six years. <laughs> like, holy shit, time flies. It does, yeah. yeah. Remember, like, like when crypto was like, crypto's not new anymore, guys, right? Like, crypto's like old. It's it's kind of like like the young kids are like they're they're up and cut. Like, crypto is is old now. I don't know. It must sound so weird to say 2024, 2024. Like we're closer to 2030 almost now. It's whatever. Um, yeah, but um, Vic is amazing, and um, also what I like about Cake Wallet is just the UI design. Like it's a beautiful design, the colors, uh, the simplicity of it. It's not that complicated. It's user friendly. So he really, really thought about the app when, when he made it and it keeps getting better and better and, and better. So, yeah, it's kind of funny too. Like the branding of cake is like friendly and happy and positive, yes. which is good. Right. And then you yeah. have like, you know, a lot of things in Monero, it's like, like, uh, you know, like, Un- anarchy. Yeah. Anarchy. Cyber. Yeah. Which, which I totally appreciate. Yeah. Um, but like Cake is like more cypherpunk than anyone because he's actually he's actually doing it and like getting users and getting people to use it. 
and in portraying things in a positive light, right? Like Monero, it's it's just it's just money, it's just cash. Exactly. Yes, you go on dark markets and use it for those purposes, but you could just use it for your. Yeah, and it looks and it just looks looks welcoming as an app. Right. Um, I've set it up to people that are not techie at all, like at all, at all, at all. They can't even send money around any like Monero and stuff, and they found they find Cape Wallet to not be that complicated, and they like it. Yeah, moving on, moving on. Next sixty years, six hundred years, six thousand. <laughs> um, somebody said in the YouTube section, Enrico Durso has the dev segment been skipped lately. Yeah, uh, we're we're gonna bring it back. Actually, yeah. have somebody coming on next week to do it. Uh, awesome. So we, yeah, we love the dev deck segment. We will be bringing it back, and we might be adding another like monthly segment on on different things as well too. Yeah, I've been trying to get someone for that. I'm still looking. Uh, that'll be. Should we men? I, I know we should have mentioned it. I, I, have you mentioned it before publicly? Yeah, actually, we might as well mention it. Um, well, I know Alaska yeah. Anon has some ideas as well. This and, week, well. and but yeah, and just in general, we're looking to do it's not weekly, maybe a monthly kind of report on doings in the in the dark market, right? With regards to Monero would be cool. Uh so so anybody that's really has their ear to the ground with that regard, that watches things over there, that wants to come on the show, you know, you don't have to you don't have to show your face. Um, you can disguise your voice if you want, if you want to sound all ominous and whatnot in cypherpunk uh you could also come and show your face right i don't think that there's anything illegal about going on and viewing the dark market uh or the you know the dark net and uh we want to do kind of like a monthly segment on that get a report on what's going on um see how monero is growing there in different ways it's it's being used where adoption's happening and all the all the interesting things that it's being used for there so that, that's that's what we're trying to do so if anybody is interested in being that person please mm. yeah. additionally i think it'll be so so interesting if we had guests that um know you know necessitate monero to do certain activities on dark land markets and you know obviously no you know no camera and then they can use a batman voice modulator whatever they want to you know to disguise their um their identity, but I think it will be really, really, really interesting just to get to know why they are using Monero, why they think you know Monero useful versus other ones. I'll be interesting. So, yep. Okay. Um, so this is this is interesting. The Irish government wants to pass a law that could see your you or your loved ones jailed for possession of memes, cartoons, or any content that could be deemed hateful. Um, and then she last wrote, coming soon, selling memes, cartoons, and West Coast gangster rap songs to Ireland on dark net markets for Monero. Um, let's watch this video. So one minute. Yep, sound. Okay, there you go. Oh, no. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I don't hear it talking. I don't hear sound. Tony. I don't hear her sound. Do you? Oh, oh, it sh should be able to because I set it to. That should have worked. Ah, wow! Ah, oh my god! Okay. Check me a little bit. Oh, okay. How about now? Can you hear now? Good. The Irish okay. government is proposing a law known as the hate speech. Oh, besi uh, before that, there are 38 people watching this video through YouTube and just 14 likes. Enrico Dursa said, guys, if you're watching, like it, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> yeah, we have 48 people like and share. Uh, this is pretty good, man. We consistently have like 50 live viewers on YouTube and then we have people watching it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only way this grows is that people like and share. So go ahead and do it. Please do. Phil, that threat needs free speech. This law could have dire consequences for our democracy. Next month, next month. And then this law will have uncertain effects on artistic and musical expression. Please support us. It could stifle the activity of public campaigning on political and civil issues and also curtail speech relating to topics about religion, ethnicity, sex and gender. You could even be jailed for possessing documents, cartoons, or memes on your devices, even if you never read them or intended on sharing them. 
Mere possession could make you a criminal under this law. Help stop this law. Visit www.freespeechireland.ie forward slash take action. Jesus. Yeah, can you imagine like they found memes of, for example, against the government or the president of Ireland or, you know, anything that they deem to be hateful. And then you can go to jail, actually be jailed. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the ultimate form of uh, censorship, right? Yes. So re- really scary stuff, guys. And if it happens there, then you'll start to see it happen in other places. Um, but yeah, this is why we Monero. Uh, Fox code uh, said in the YouTube section, how do they know I have it in the phone? Well, I mean, maybe, I mean, they, they don't, but you know, for some reason, maybe if they go to you on the streets and say, oh, I mean, that'll be highly unlikely, but I don't know they, they could, they could the find that. The point is it's, it's going to have a chilling effect, right? Because right. most people want, don't want to do illegal things. Uh, so if they create laws like this, it's just going to have a chilling effect on society where they're going to be, uh, you know, apprehensive uh, and they're going to not, not be as willing to, you know, post things and memes that they think might get them in, you know, that are, are controversial. And, th- and those are the, often the, th- the, that's the type of speech that we need the most, right? It's the, mm-hmm. the speech that is controversial. Those are the messages that you need to get out to the public forums for, the public to decide whether or not these are good ideas or bad so very, very dangerous very dangerous idea to to move in that direction start to censor things in those ways very dangerous and actually folks think about it this way what if is going to be incentivized for people to report you i've seen someone on the bus looking up memes and they seem to be hateful because blah 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 and then i mean you we will not probably know not know that you've been reported and all of a sudden, you know, so there's so many things. Plus, plus what Doug said. I mean, it's just. It's... I can't believe there's actually a bill for that. Though. I mean, that yeah. is. Yeah. Ireland. What is going on over there? Anybody that, that lives there that has more details on that, please jump up on the viewers on stage. I'd love to uh, get some local input on what's going on there. That sounds absurd. Like, how, how, could, how could it have gotten to that point where the citizens have elected people that are that are willing to move their country in that direction that's mm. terrifying and anything can, anything can be hateful anything you, you may not think that it's hateful but it's yeah um let's move on let's talk about uh, um michael sailor and the bitcoin community so several privacy wrote are we in it for freedom money or purely fiat number go up. We'll never in a million years understand why people simp after Sailor when he stands against everything that Bitcoin was created to be. Ridiculous that he headlines all the major conferences throughout the year and says and says things like this. Stop talking about regulatory arbitrage, censorship, resistance, privacy, and tax evasions. These are all bad ideas. We hate that. People with billions of dollars, they don't want to invest in crypto networks that support anarchists, Sailor explained. Um, anything that advertises privacy and freedom for go- from government uh, theft becomes a direct enemy of the FBI, Interpol, and every law enforcement agency on the planet. So then what is the point of Bitcoin? Just to adhere to regulations and obviously, you know, fiat number go up. It's definitely not about freedom. If it's, if you don't, you know, um, focus on censorship resistance, privacy and not bending the knee to any organization in the world. Michael Saylor has been like, uh, like one of the worst things for, for crypto. <laughs> I mean, he's just out there um, just destroying what the meme of Bitcoin is supposed to be. Uh, it's He's turned it into not even digital gold. I, I say this all the time. I think he, he's, he's pushing it towards digital property, which is really what it, what it is. Mm-hmm non-fungible digital property he's even talked about it in those terms kind of like owning a piece of manhattan and what is that when you when you own a piece of property everybody knows you own it right that's right it's out there it's public knowledge um the whole world knows you own it the whole world knows when you transact it and, and sell it to somebody else um this is seller's vision of bitcoin it's not about censorship resistance it's not about peer-to-peer untraceable digital cash it's about digital property 
um, that's on a ledger for the whole world to see. And he thinks that's, I don't know, that's, I get that that's good for, for, for people that want to want to store their wealth in this, in this digital thing. Um, you know, we, we talk about it all the time on the show. I mean, at the end of the day, then the, what even gives it its, its base utility? Why, why does it even have value in the first place? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But what, what's, what, what makes it so special? The fact that it's the first, I mean, yeah, the, we had, you know, for example, um, we had the first cars and first planes and whatever, and that's that's cool. But we have stuff that are way better now than the first car that we invented hundred years ago, or the first planes. So I mean, it's people make it people turn it into a holy thing that it's the Bitcoin blockchain and it's so special and it's the first uh, first crypto effect, which you know, which is true. I mean, being first does, does help and it has a big name and everybody knows Bitcoin. But it's time to move on. There's nothing special. It doesn't work as money. Which is the most important thing. So then, what is the point of it? It's not censorship resistance. Doesn't offer your privacy. It doesn't really work as a currency. A lot of people in the Bitcoin community they don't agree with the twenty-one million uh, cap of coins. Plus, what is going to happen to the miners eventually when they're just going to rely on fees? How is the network going to sustain itself? You know. Yeah, I mean, what Sailor's really saying too, to, right? If Bitcoin is going to the moon, we're going to need a lot of deep pockets to climb on board. People with billions of dollars don't want to invest in crypto networks that support anarchists. So, uh, you know, he, he's laying it out right there, right? So if if you want the number to go up, this is the direction we need to mm-hmm. point it towards. And that is that is the problem with Bitcoin. They're yeah. designing towards number go up instead of towards being peer-to-peer digital cash. Yep. All right, keep it moving, keep it moving. Let's keep it moving with more stuff from uh, Set for Privacy. This one um, is about him being called Lynch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is just crazy. So, this guy T Dev is just—he's a disaster. He's <laughs> he's kind of like like a, like respect for Samurai Wallet and what they've done creating privacy tech for Bitcoin. But this dude, T Dev, is just horrible for the space. I mean, here he is. He's calling for the lynching of Seth for privacy. Obviously, I you know. He, he, he loves being extreme, right? Like I was saying before, right? Like, so, so cake wallet is all like cheery and, you know, butterflies and, and cake samurai wallet. It's really badass. In fact, it's Ron who's like the most badass dude in the world. Uh, yeah. I guarantee if you met this guy, he's like, he's just like such a little bitch. I mean, so here he is attack, attacking Seth for privacy because Seth pointed out that the implementation of BTC uh, arrow atomic swaps that they're using maybe uh, may is it isn't the isn't the most recent implementation, and it's the one that will effectively allow it to be seen that Bitcoin is being swapped into Monero, um, right? Like so, chain analysis companies will 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 be able to see that. And so Seth is just just pointing this out. He's not saying, you know, don't use it. He's, not, he's just just pointing pointing out a you know how how the tech actually works and what the implications are. And uh, T Dev calls for calls for his lynching because because of this, which it, it you know is it's just respect lost, right? I mean, so if if their tech is as good as 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 they claim, they should have no problem talking about it out in the open and they shouldn't be calling for the lynching of people that are just questioning it and bringing up points about it i'm just really surprised because like their their whole thing is like being against btc maxis and they've created their own kind of group of maximalism um the the t dev back i don't i don't even know what it is i can't really even describe it it's just whatever he says is correct uh he wants to control the narrative he doesn't want people, you know, uh, talk talking about his technology in, in an open way and having debates about it. He flipped out on me because we had um, Nopara on our show, the creator of Sabi Wallet. You know, Wasabi's competitors with with Samurai, um, and because of that, now he refuses to engage with me. He won't come mm. on 
well, he doesn't go on podcasts anyway, but he's he doesn't want samurai to to participate in anything we do or whatnot because we had a guest on the show mm. from a competing company that they don't like. Like that just that just shows that just screams of insecurity to me, right? Like, what 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 are you afraid of? You know, you're, you're working on a technology. Let's come and talk about it. We can talk about the pros and the cons. We can compare it to your competition. Uh, but if you're trying to shut down anybody that's like talking about your tech in an open way, or if you're trying to shut down anybody that has that that associates with people that are your competitors, and now you don't want to like associate with them, I mean that's like I don't, I don't know. That's that's the ultimate form of cancel culture. It's like right. completely antithetical to being a cypherpunk. Like you're you're not a cypherpunk. You're just a punk. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny that was a good one um and especially like if you're against censorship then how about be be the one to allow other people to talk even even if you don't agree and as long as it's a respectful exchange then just let the other person talk for example we wanted zalka on the show multiple times just you know just because maybe we don't agree on certain stuff we can still discuss or at monerotopia anybody's welcome and there are yeah. people different people zcash people everybody as long as you communicate and we're all on the same path and we get along. That's yeah. not, there's going to be competition always, but be respectful and always. Uh, yeah, door, door, even, you know, doors open, you know, sam especially open. samurai people. I'm so excited. They, they're doing the, the Bitcoin to Monero atomic swaps and they're yes. very excited for them. But like, like, let's talk about it. And just yeah. because you're doing it doesn't mean we all have to say, okay, bow, bow our heads to you and be like, this is, this is, this is amazing. This is perfect. We're allowed to question it, and we're allowed. You know, we're we're gonna do that. They're, they're gonna lose users. They're gonna lose customers. Mm -hmm. um, because, like uh, Rice Hiller was saying, it screams scam to me. This is this is how people are gonna view it. Especially not even with the me, right? I I had Wasabi on there. All right, sure. I'm just a podcast guy. Say what you want. Yeah. Okay. But when you attack Seth for privacy, extremely intelligent diplomatic dude who's been v nothing but like honest and 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 straightforward in this space and very balanced in how he approaches things if you attack him for making comments on your tech you're you're gonna lose a ton of credibility mm -hmm. and especially when Seth for privacy comments on something it's not just to comment he's actually giving you constructive good yeah. criticism that if you take, and your product is going to be better because that's what he cares about, <laughs> and that's what the community wants. People saying it's it's all about marketing. Uh, yeah, I don't understand that marketing approach. I get they have like their little army of people <laughs> that are in their cult, but I don't see how that tent is going to grow beyond that small army because there's only so many people that are going to go along with that because most people are smart enough to to not want to be part of a cult. And that's why Kickball has a lot of success. No drama, easy to use, you know, still gives you the, the, the freedom that Monero does, you know, all, all this stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Vic would never call for the lynching of anybody <laughs> that has comments on his technology. No. Plus, you actually have some level of responsibility if you're part of a team uh, to, you know, be careful with the stuff that you say on the internet because people will find that. But anyway... Uh, let's move on. Let's talk about Stripe. So Stripe is trying to blackmail someone for selling Bitcoin mining hardware. So Rob said on Twitter, the platforming freedom technology is now what the world needs. Stripe doesn't realize it is on the wrong side of history. Please retweet like for vis uh, visibility. Stripe support said, hey, Rob, thanks for waiting while we looked into this. Looking at your website, it appears you're selling mining hardware. Could you confirm if this is something you'd be willing to remove from your website? At present, mining hardware is against our terms of service, and so is unsu unsupportable. <laughs> and then a fluffy pony tweeted back: "If only there were some alternative form of payment you could accept for mining hardware. Maybe something that doesn't require centralized third party to accept payments. I know this is crazy talk, and it'll never exist. But just just imagine such a world." Wink, wink. And then somebody said, reply back, um, Monero fixes that. You can be platform selling CPUs. 100%. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. Stripe, and then we talked about um, PayPal censoring. 
just because you you tweet you tweeted something that might be regarded as hateful, then you'll be they will subtract I think twenty three hundred dollars or something from your account per hateful comment or whatever you you wrote. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So if you made two, that's like forty six hundred dollars, and I think it's still being implemented. I think at some point they had it implemented and they they um they took it off and then they put it back on. Um, yeah, yeah, but but Fluffy's point is like, why are they even using these systems? They should be exactly. using, you know, to, you know, using Monero to to sell their their mining equipment or or Bitcoin. Yep. Also, um, yeah, keep moving, keep moving. What? Uh, let's talk about um, JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon calling Bitcoin a, a pet rock. This is yeah. This is funny. So let's watch this video. So what happened to the guest? Is he still here? Is is he waiting or? Uh, I think he is back. Yep, he's back. Okay. Do you want to finish the new section and then go to uh, back to the guest, or do you want to? Yeah, might as well. Let's 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 run through it. Let's get through the news. And we'll bring him okay. up. Okay. Okay. We can go faster for the other ones. Oh, this one's not loading. Let's try to refresh. There we go. That I know, I know you you find sort of laborious at yeah. this point. Uh, <laughs> good, which, good word. <laughs> which is Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, this ETF was approved yeah. uh, just about a week ago now, yeah. and I think a lot of people are trying to understand what it ultimately means. Yeah. Uh, J.P. Morgan. I imagine uh, if you were a client of J.P. Morgan, you could call your broker and say, uh, "Get get get me some of this ETF." Mm -hmm. uh, what are you telling? What are you telling your brokers to tell them back when they make that call? Yeah. So this is an important thing. I would, this is the last time I've ever talked about this in CNBC, okay? So help me God. <laughs> Blockchain is real. It's a technology. We use it. It's going to move money. It's going to move data. It's efficient. We've been talking about that for 12 years, too, and it's very small, okay? So I think we've wasted too many words in that. Cryptocurrencies, there are two types. There's a cryptocurrency which might actually do something. Think of a cryptocurrency as an embedded smart contract in it, and then we can use it buy and sell real estate to move data. That may have value. The idea of tokenizing. Tokenizing things that, that you do something with. And then there's one which does nothing. I call it the pet rock, the Bitcoin or something like that. And so on the Bitcoin, you know, there's, first of all, and I'm, I'm not trying to make a joke here. There are use cases, AML, fraud, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, sex trafficking. Those are real use cases. And you see it being used for hundreds, maybe 50, $100 billion a year for that. That is the end use case. Everything else is people train among themselves. So, Speculate. You yeah. Now, okay. Now, my last statement, the last time I ever talked about Bitcoin is I defend your right to do Bitcoin. I think, you know, it's okay. okay. I don't want to tell you what to do. So my personal advice is don't get involved, but I don't want to tell any one of you what to do. It's a free country. What do you, and make, so, of, what do you make of that's why, What do you make of the other firms, the Black Rocks of the world that, that obviously, and, and Larry, Larry Fink <laughs> changed his view of this, obviously. Yeah. And maybe he changed his view because you think he genuinely believes in Bitcoin or gen or believed it because he thinks that there's a marketplace for it and he wants to be part of that market. But what do you think of the, I and mean, there's a, about a dozen big financial companies, Fidelity no, included. No, number one, I don't care. So just please stop talking about this shit. And, <laughs> and I don't know what he would say about blockchain versus currencies that do something versus Bitcoin that does nothing. It may be that not different than me, but you know, this is what makes a market. People have opinions. I, this is the last time I'm ever going to state my opinion. Uh, he's you know, not to a topic that I know. I... Not wrong. <laughs> right? No, he's not wrong. Uh, he's saying Bitcoin's only use case is that of a pet rock. Uh, actually, no, it does have some. Well, he, he's wrong one way, right? So he's saying it, it does have some utility, and that's for purposes of, you know, using it on the dark market or paying ransoms. Um, but it's it's not even it's not good it's not even good it's being used for those purposes but it's not good for those purposes and it, it's being used less and less for those purposes because people are realizing it, it doesn't function well as digital cash so it doesn't even have that utility that that's where he actually is wrong so it's it's more akin to pet rock uh, than anything else he's actually giving it more credit than than it deserves I would say at this point yeah that's a good point. Uh, Ramsey yeah, wrote on YouTube. Can, that rock can, can somehow sustain itself for forever and continue to be number go up as people just blindly decide to to all agree that this thing has value for forever, even though it has no base utility. Somebody wrote, "Bitcoin does do something, Jamie. It obsolete's you." <laughs> 
No, I don't think it does. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about, um, yeah, let's get into some some Trump news. So these, are, these ones are pretty promising. Um, President Trump just made a new promise in New Hampshire tonight, and I have full confidence he will keep, keep it. Tonight, Trump said, I'm also making another promise to protect Americans from government tyranny. As your president, I will never allow the creation of a central bank digital currency. Such a currency will give the federal government absolute control over your money. This will be a dangerous threat to freedom and it will stop it from coming to America. We are also put, going to put in place strong protections to stop banks and regulators from trying to debank you for your political beliefs. That will never happen while I am your president. Promising to see. Uh, a little troubling that it took Trump so long to get there. Mm -hmm. He's been a little bit slow on the whole crypto thing uh, and the CBDC thing, right? Ron DeSantis was like the first one who came out really strong against CBDCs. Uh, I think we saw RFK Jr. is against it. Obviously, Ramaswamy was against it. So now it looks like Ramaswamy has, has dropped out of the race. He's now teaming up with Trump, and it looks like he's whispering in his ear, and Trump is actually listening to him, which is, that's encouraging, right? So if Trump is going to be our next president, uh, it's nice to know that it looks like we'll have Ramaswamy there by his side, whether he's the VP or something else in his cabinet. Um, he will be informing him on crypto, on CBDCs, and who knows, maybe even something like Monero and digital cash, right? So I've been trying to get Ramaswamy's attention. I would love to hear his full take on, dig on digital, the digital cash use case for crypto. I've heard him say things that seem to very much align with being supportive of it and believing that you know we need we need a cash replacement for the internet. Uh, so maybe this is our pathway towards that. Ramaswamy whispering in the ear of of Trump, but Trump doesn't 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 arrive at these things on his own it just it just kind of proves that you know tr trump is there to to please the people he see he sees the liberty thing working he sees it working with uh how successful malay is, is now right and uh he sees malay trending on the internet so he's like let me do some of that let me do some of that base malay uh anarcho libertarianism talk um but it's good it's good that w whether he's doing it just to pander to the people doesn't matter. The fact is, he is doing and he's helping to spread the meme and spread these ideas. I can't wait to talk about Millet, actually. And we're going to talk about it in a little bit. Um, because last week we were wondering what, what is he doing at WEF conference? What is he going to talk about? And his talk was really interesting. So we're going to get into it in a little bit. Um, but let's talk about Tom Emmer. So, Representative Tom Emmer agreed with former President Donald Trump's view of central bank digital currencies as a threat to financial privacy. And essentially what this article is saying is that he would like to to work with, uh, with Trump. Tom Emmer would like to work with Trump to fight against the expanding government surveillance state. And yep. um, no one's on the forefront of that, always out there against CBDCs and always speaking positively about digital cash. But it seems like the Zcash people have gotten to him. For some reason, Monero people aren't able to, including myself. I've tried. I've spoken to his office. So yeah. I find that a little sus. Like he's willing to talk to Zcash related people, um, hasn't hasn't been willing to talk to the the, the Monero people or or bring. I don't think he's mentioned Monero by name, um, hmm. so I don't know what that's all about. Can you imagine if we got Millet to come to the conference in Argentina? Yeah, obviously, that, that that is the goal. That is that's the, goal. the dream. That would be amazing. Oh my god, that would be so cool. We're gonna like. For that and how we might be able to get his attention but uh i'm sure i'm sure he's a busy guy we'll see uh yeah we should say you know next monero topia conference will be in buenos aires will be in argentina and, and we now know that it's going to be in december it's going to be mm -hmm. the first weekend in december alongside la de Conf. Mm, okay god if you can you imagine if, if Millet actually came to the conference we would need we would have <laughs> thousands tens of thousands of people hopefully coming I'm yeah sure. we're going to do it in a way where it's going to be obviously open for for locals to attend basically if for like a nominal price or very cheap or there'll be sections we'll be able to it's going to be built in a way we did like we did the last Monerotopia in mexico city 
uh, with the marketplace open to the public. So that's going to allow anybody to kind of like integrate into the conference and come and learn about Monero. We should run the space next to the governmental building. If I want to pass by, hey, what is what's that? Why are there are so many people there? <laughs> they was like, relay, come talk. <laughs> come on. Awesome. Oh, That'll be awesome. Let's talk about um, a tweet from Jim uh, Jim Jordan. We now we now know the federal government flagged terms like um, MAGA and Trump to financial institutions if America's completed transactions using those terms. What was also flagged if you bought a religious text like a bible or shopped at best bro shop that's that's interesting yeah scary stuff guys like here we are here we are uh, talking about ireland and how how they're ready to make certain uh, memes illegal uh we got the same thing going on in this country a different form of it mm-hmm. and once again this is why we monero so we can preserve our our liberty and uh, our free speech in the digital age because we can't rely on, on governments to preserve it for us. And if that wasn't scary enough, that's going to pretty scary and concerning stuff. So the WEF just confirmed a global CBDC. They admit they will track what you eat, your travels, who you speak to, and everything else you do in life. But of course, they're doing this to save us from the climate emergency. So let's watch this uh, this video. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. Uh, I'm waiting for like Malay to just come like crashing through the the background. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> it's it's so. Hmm. I don't even know what word to use to be able to to utter those words. To just like and just just so confidently and so without worry. Like, yeah, we're gonna track what you eat, your travels, who you speak to, everything else you do in life. And all the stuff in order to protect you. Yes. I bet. Th- does this guy even have kids or family? That's what I wonder. You know, because your daughter, your 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 son is going to live for that. I don't think he's going to have an option to opt out, or maybe he would. Maybe something. Yeah. Well, I mean, these people are so short sighted and uh, so selfish to want to push the world in this direction. I think I know what the fix is. So, what we need to do? We're gonna go to WEF. We need to put some uh, ayahuasca in their uh, beverages, <laughs> make them drink it, <laughs> have some spiritual awakening, and I think we're, we're gonna be better well, off really soon. In fact, ayahuasca has on demons, though. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I haven't. Yet, <laughs> what is it gonna turn worse? <laughs> this is this coming from in, in their ability to to <laughs> control people. Yeah. All right, keep moving. Oh, we're gonna watch Milay in a little bit. Um. Let me just mention a couple of stuff about the digital euro, and then we're going to switch to to Milan. Then we have um, three more stuff that are faster. Um, the EU is about to outlaw and restrict some of the most prized features in crypto. So the EU is taking aim at privacy coins and self-custody wallets under a new anti-money laundering regime. It's not about anti-money laundering. It's about you not owning anything at all with your money or your house or anything. They, they don't want you to own anything. This is the whole point. Restricting self-custody wallet payments, increasing the tracking of crypto transfers, banning privacy coins. It's, this is what basically this whole art, article is about. Um, yeah, so that's what they're working on. And that's what is coming. And then... Yeah, that, I mean, I was just kind of distracted for a moment. That's uh, that's big news, right? So they're... they're We've talk, been talking about it on the show for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're looking to clamp down on on privacy coins, on privacy tech, and on uh, just and just the ability to use crypto the way it's meant to be used, peer to peer, where you you know host your own, host your own wallet. Um, so we we know it's been coming down the pipe. It looks like they're inching closer towards that. And they don't care about terrorism. They don't care about war. They're funding those stuff anyway. The whole, yeah, it's, 
it's such a um, such a shit show. Um, they just don't want you to own anything. And they said these are three critical changes European European Union lawmakers are expected to make this week as they complete a three year process of updating the blocks rules on money laundering and terrorist organization funding in the financial sector. And you can yeah, see how we do want to maybe this week get somebody on on from uh you know from the European scene that's part of part of the uh the legislature over there that come on and talk about it because mm-hmm. I mean that, that's just tremendous news if if that actually happens it's tremendous news and then let's talk about um, this so the prohib- prohibition of cash payments over 10,000 euro and prohibition of anonymous cash payments over 3,000 euro so this is definitely a war on cash that is happening in in Europe and everywhere in in the world right now Wait, scroll up. Who's who's tweeting that? That was uh, Patrick uh, Breyer. Yes, this is the guy I'm trying to do. Yeah, this is oh. the guy on the show. Um, That'd be awesome. So, yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get this guy. Pirate party, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pirate party. Belgian. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Unfortunately, he's very much the minority over there in in mm-hmm. in the parliament but uh at least he's trying but and guys if you want to get any, anybody's attention just message them and let them know that you know maybe we should interview them or get get us um the yeah. attention to yeah, reach out to those people yeah you're you people are always welcome to be on the show to, on this show as well as a special guest if you ever want to come on talk about some project you're working on that's mm-hmm. uh, you know Digital cash, uh, freedom tech related. Mm-hmm. Chat Monerotopia ProtonMail dot com. Always let us know if you want to come on the show, or if you want us to talk to someone, let us know. Yeah, we got we got uh, over fifty viewers now, guys. Like and share. Forty four on YouTube and seven likes. Got a lot more to do. Awesome, South Padre Tony. Hey man. Hey, nice. Okay, now let's go to Milay. Let's go to Milay's speech. Well, this one is 22 minutes, and I'm not going to. I'm going to play a section out of it, actually. Um, yeah, the whole thing's 20 minutes long. I recommend everybody, if you haven't at some point, give this a listen. Share it with your friends and family. I'm sending it to everybody in my family, and let, let me. They're not. They're, 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 they definitely don't uh, lean as far anarcho-capitalist as I do. Uh, but he, Millet, does a great job here at summarizing the problems with socialism so it's it's just a great great thing to to share with friends and fam to get the information out there somebody said i'm gonna play a a clip um but somebody said i'm from argentina and i'm sorry to see this guy is our president i'm embarrassed but he will be gone soon this is a bot (laughs) and 22 comments this is a bot oh no that's interesting okay we have 22 comments brainwash people out there man for Argentina too, we're very proud of our president. He was elected with fifty-six percent of the vote. We all support him. Oh, yeah, I don't know. This wow. video has gotten, I think, significantly uh, more views than uh, when Trump went and spoke at the WEF. And Trump's video has been on for years now. Wow, it's already far surpassed it. That's incredible. So um, people like what he's saying. Uh, let's let's watch 47 seconds so. yeah i think this is a good one because i think it's uh it used ai to to translate so we could hear him speaking yeah he's english and his own voice still yeah. the knowledge is amazing yeah uh, that's 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 where it said he said but <laughs> we'll yeah yeah somebody said that actually um yeah. you didn't speak in english and this doesn't matter the translation i heard oh no yeah all right but I guess like maybe start a couple of wars. Yeah, so live, for a bit. live for a bit, just beginning. Yeah. Neo-Marxists have managed to co-opt the common sense of the Western world. They achieved this through the appropriation of the media, culture, universities, and yes, even international organizations. The final case is very serious as it involves institutions with huge influence on the political and economic decisions of the countries in these multilateral organizations. Fortunately, more of us dare to raise our voices as we see that if we don't confront these ideas head on, the only possible destiny is more state, more regulation, 
more socialism, more poverty, less freedom, and consequently, a worse quality of life. He just sounds too good to be true. And can, you ma- can you imagine being on stage at WEF? Most of the people that go there probably don't care about the human population. They actually want to enslave it. And this guy hops on stage and says all this stuff. They probably want to assassinate him as soon as he steps out the, off the stage. Um, yeah, I mean, people are saying, like, why did they even let him speak? Exactly. And obviously, you still have a lot of people out there saying that he's, like, controlled opposition. Otherwise, why would they let him do this? I mean, my take is, all right, if it's controlled opposition, then they're really taking a great risk here, and then so be it. Because the end result is he's spreading these ideas further than they've ever been spread. Um, and so we got we to gotta applaud that. It's making progress. The networker said on YouTube, his lips match his AI-generated words. Scary accuracy. Yeah, it's really, and it's using his own voice as well. Yeah, um, it's, that's terrifying because I mean, just think of what they can do, right? Uh, you're gonna see, you're gonna see videos, very convincing videos of of, of world leaders, celebrities, whatever, saying things that they're not actually saying. It's gonna be, it's gonna be scary, guys. They can make make one of you. I love there. I love Zcash. This Monero thing. <laughs> uh, you can, yeah, people, right. that's that's a fake right away. <laughs> you all know. Um, but yeah, but you should definitely watch the whole speech uh, if you have a chance. It's a really good um, speech by Milay. Um, let's talk about this real quick, and then one more thing, and then we'll go to the guest. He has been uh, patiently waiting. Multiple U.S. Senate bills object to CBDC's definition of money. Basically, bills against referring to a CBDC as money have been filed in the in the states of Utah, South Carolina, South Dakota, and Tennessee. These these uh, the, the bills would exclude a CBDC from the definition of money, and could create a significant roadblocks to a CBDC in the United States. So, that is good news. Good news, good news. And then the last thing, so we talked about Germany and uh, truckers and farmers protesting. This actually happened in Romania. If, um, I actually didn't see the news, but I've seen it on Instagram of my friends and they were, they were probably, uh, posting on the stories. And um, I just kept seeing a lot of trucks and, and farmers. And then I was like, is that happening in my own country as well? And then I started looking into it and, and it is. So Romanian truckers and farmers are uh, protesting against the government and same stuff. Um, that they're not doing. They want lower taxes, higher subsidies, and they just want demands that they were not giving them. And the Romanian government is um, not helping farmers. Um, of course, they're trying to get rid of them as well. And I'm happy that the protests are going on in my own country as well, and people are stepping up. So People are rising up. People are rising up. Um, yeah, yeah, so that was the section. Uh, Kuno fundraisers for them. No, yeah, that would be cool. Let me see if I can actually play this a uh, little bit of this video. Let's see if, what they show. Local credit unions and community. Okay, well, it's an ad. Um, yeah, but <laughs> a lot of trucks, basically. Um, yeah, you can see more of that, and hopefully that will start to happen, right? Monero being used uh, for fundraisers for funding political movements around the world that are freedom oriented. Uh, mm-hmm. Hoping maybe 2024 is is the year we, we see more of that. Somebody said, going to see a video of Doug selling all his Monero for Bitcoin coming soon. If you see that, that's a fake. 